All right, welcome back. In our last video, we ended up putting in an interior wall, uh, an interior door, an exterior door, and some windows, which now leaves us with a uh, shed, which has a floor, four exterior walls, an interior partition wall, uh, and now we need to start moving up above our wall height, and I believe we need to put in, according to our document, looks to be like a ceiling. And that ceiling is going to be composed of two by a floor joist. And it's hard to tell and it's not labeled, but I believe since we put gypsum wallboard on the inside of the exterior wall, we probably should have gypsum wallboard on the underside or the uh, inside of our ceiling. So we need a two by eight ceiling joist with gypsum wallboard. So, again, I like to suggest that everybody create in a plan view whenever possible uh, by working on our first floor plan here instead of our ceiling plan, which if I double click on my ceiling plan, you'll see that there's a, a kind of a generic outline of our structure, but it doesn't have all the stuff in it that our first floor level does. Uh, and if we <clears throat> pay close attention, to the alignment of our ceiling, you'll notice that it also, just like our floor, doesn't really go beyond the outside edge of our stud wall. So, working in our floor plan here is a little bit more beneficial because again, we can see the detail. It may also be possible to turn on the fine detail here, but you can see because the ceiling level is at the top of our walls, we're not seeing the detail inside of the walls like we're seeing, a seeing on our first floor plan. So when we're ready to put in a ceiling, we're gonna go back to our architecture tab and we're gonna go over to ceiling. And we've got a couple of things here that are different. You'll see it's defaulting to an automatic ceiling. That can sometimes be problematic. Um, I generally suggest, especially at this early stage, that we just sketch our ceiling and this will go in just like our floor did. Okay, so we've got the same kind of uh, red check, and, or sorry, red X and green check, and, and we have a rectangle option and a pick walls, and uh, if we wanted to do curves and things like that, we could sketch that stuff in. Um, but I'm not ready to do that yet because we need to go and look at the properties of our ceiling. And right now, all I see is a two foot by four foot ACT, which is acoustic ceiling tile. Uh, maybe you've seen these in a basement. Uh, they're in our classroom at school. Uh, this is a, a suspended from the roof or ceiling um, from the roof above. Uh, it's a system hung from a bunch of wires with a metal grid, uh, and we have ceiling tiles. We will not be using that here. We have gypsum wallboard, GWB, on furring. Furring is like wood strips. Uh, we might use that to uh, you know attach a gypsum wallboard to maybe... Um, a steel truss or something like that. Uh, or we have gypsum wallboard on metal stud. I'm going to suggest we go with the metal stud because I want to show you a little something different. So I've got the properties selected here and I'm going to edit its type and that should sound familiar. I've done that a couple times here and we're going to modify this. So I'm going to duplicate, I'm going to duplicate the ceiling type and I'm going to do gypsum wallboard on wood. Maybe I'll do, this is supposed to be a two by eight right after, two by eight wood rafter. I'll delete the stud. All right, so two by eight wood rafter. So I'm gonna say okay, and now I can feel free to modify this to suit my purposes. Again, I can come back and change these things later, but if I know ahead of time what I want, it's a little bit easier just to take care of it now. So I'm gonna edit this structure, <clears throat> and again, we've seen this before. So the first one, we have half inch gypsum wallboard, uh, and that looks like it will match what we have going on on our walls, so we'll leave that. Now we need a two by eight ceiling joist. So if we go up here to structure, currently it's 
looks like a two by four metal stud is what it is. Let's first change this uh, to, it's a two by eight. We did this before. That would be 7.25 or seven and a quarter inches. The next one, which we haven't done yet, is we're actually gonna change the material. Okay, so I wanna select the material and then I wanna click on that little gray checkbox on the right-hand side, and that will bring up my material window. And again, this has a lot of controls. We're only gonna worry about the basic level of stuff right now. Uh, and that is, we don't want a metal stud, we want dimensional wood lumber. And this list is alphabetical. You can certainly use the search function at the top if you know what you're looking for. But in our purpose, for our uh, project here, we're gonna use wood, dimensional lumber. So I'm gonna select that. And notice when I do that, the color has already changed to be kind of a yellowish wood color. And then now that is reflected here in our uh, roof, I'm oh, sorry, this is our ceiling assembly. So I've got the correct thickness, I've got the material, and now I'm gonna say okay. And okay again. So now I've got the right ceiling created. Um, I also maybe wanna look at the rest of my properties. Right now the level is set to be first floor. I'm pretty sure I want my ceiling at the ceiling level. The other thing is because we're talking about a ceiling, there is a height offset here of eight feet. I'm going to leave that at eight feet so you can see what that causes us to happen. Um, but now we're ready to do our sketching. So again, I'm actually going to come up and I'm going to get the rectangle tool just like we did on our floor. And I'm going to draw the rectangle to the outside corners of the wall, hit escape a couple of times, zoom in, and I want to have my exterior, uh, or sorry, the outside edge of my ceiling stop at the outside edge of my stud wall framing. So again, uh, I'm using a combination of clicking and dragging and on, for whatever reason, these vertical ones are being, uh, are complaining. And so I'm using my arrow key. And uh, just for every time I click Looks like I'm going up by uh, about half an inch, uh, two eighths, a quarter of an inch. If I zoom in and I use the arrows again, it's it's going to move it at a different increment, or at least it in theory should. So just FYI, arrow keys can be helpful while you have something selected. And I'm going to finish my editing, and let's see what this looks like in 3D. Okay. So notice how I still have the ceiling uh, highlighted so I can see its properties. But I also notice that uh, the ceiling level, I have a height offset of that of eight feet. And right now, I, because I move the level constraint to the ceiling level, now I have my offset, which should automatically update. But if it doesn't do it fast enough for you like it did there, there is an apply button down here in the left-hand corner uh, that you might want to hit. Uh, and so if I change this real quick and I hit apply, it should automatically update that for us relatively quickly. Okay. And since I just did that, I'm going to hit save. And now we have a ceiling in on our shed. Last but not least, we need to put in our roof. And so we have shingles on sheathing with two by eight rafters. And so let's take a look at what that uh, will entail for us to create. So I'm gonna go back to my first floor level. And over here by ceiling, we have a roof option. And if I take the roof and it, when I go in to create a roof here, it's gonna tell me the roof is gonna be created on a particular level. So this is basically helping me understand what level I want to align the roof at. Uh, for our purposes, we're gonna go to ceiling, but we can always change this at a later date. So I'm gonna say yes to the ceiling, I'm sorry, the roof placement, and we go back into 
a sketch mode, just like we saw on the floor and the ceiling. The next important thing to take a look at is the properties. So I see over here on the left-hand side, I have 8-inch rafter, 10-inch rafter, 12-inch rafter. And if I remember correctly, we are looking to use an 8-inch rafter with plywood sheathing and asphalt shingles. So I'm going to, again, go to my properties, and I want to get the 8-inch asphalt shingle option, and I'm going to check its type. And I want to see what's in here and how thick things are. So I've got my two by eight rafters, or, or sorry, in this case, yeah, roof rafters. I've got three quarter inch plywood sheathing. Well, let's just double check. I have plywood sheathing. It doesn't tell me how thick, but we're gonna leave it at three quarters of an inch. And we have asphalt shingles, and they're saying it's a quarter of an inch. So this default roof will work for us. Uh, based on the needs of our design. So I'm going to leave that roof exactly as it is. And now I have a couple of other options. I like to use pick walls here. We haven't done this before. We've been using the rectangle. But the pick walls has a benefit here because when I pick a wall, a roof's going to have what's usually referred to as an overhang. And you can see I have the ability to control the overhang up here in the uh, kind of cyan greenish blue bar top. I should also have the option uh, to do it in the properties, but that's usually not available until after I finish creating the roof. So uh, in our example, nowhere does it say what our overhang looks like. I'm going to guess that that's, oh, I don't know, six inches, maybe less. Um, but we're going to leave ours at 12 inches just because uh, since they don't really specify it anywhere. And if we look kind of at the examples here, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of overhang there. There's pros and cons to overhang depending upon the style and the needs of your design. We're going to leave it at 12 inches in this example. You could certainly change that if you saw fit. But when I have that overhang in there and I have pick walls, what happens is when I come down to the wall, you'll see it highlights the wall. I haven't left clicked on anything and I'm getting it a, a hidden line, a dashed line. And depending upon where my cursor is on the wall, it will basically, I'm telling the, <clears throat> the software, the computer, where to put the overhang. Is it on this side of the wall or is it on this side of the wall? And I would want it on the outside of the wall. And so by using this pick wall, I can pretty quickly go around the outside edge and put in our uh, sketch geometry. Now, some of you may have noticed these purple triangles. These are slope triangles. And if we look back at our example, we're supposed to be doing a 512 slope. So I can individually control these or over here in the properties. Now that I have some sketch geometry in, I have the option to control the slope. And I'm going to change that to 512. This is where I like to stop. And I just like, I just like to make sure that a roof will be created. So I'm going to finish my editing mode. And goodness gracious, it looks like nothing has happened. So let's take a look at our 3D view. And it does appear that there is a roof and it is in the proper location. The problem is, what kind of roof is that? It doesn't look like our example. Therefore, it's not the correct roof. We need a gabled roof. So this is how we're going to modify this roof. So again, we haven't done a modification of an object we've already created yet. I don't, I don't believe so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just selecting the item. I think maybe in a previous video we selected the floor and did an edit boundary just so you can see it, but I don't think we physically did anything. So here I'm going to select the roof and I'm going to edit its footprint. Okay, this is basically editing the sketch geometry. So this is one of the times where I'm not modifying anything, so I'm okay. I'm sorry, I'm not changing the size of anything. Uh, but I am going to mess with its properties a little bit. 
So you'll notice each of the four sides, in this case, has a sloped triangle. Traditionally, on a gable roof, the shorter sides have no slope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the short sides, which I want to become my gable. And when I do that, I've got an option here. And the option that I really want to pay attention to is up here uh, in the either this, again, this kind of magenta, not uh, cyan, bluish green bar, or down here in properties where there it says define slope or define roof slope. And in this case, I don't want a slope, so I want to uncheck that. Okay, so you'll see, notice now that the triangle is gone. And if I finish that, you'll see I now have a gable end on that roof. And I need to do that on the other side because I have a two-sided gable. So I will again select it, uncheck to find slope, finish this catching mode, and there is my gable roof, and I'm going to do a save. Because again, I haven't, I haven't saved in a while, and I just made a big change. But we're not done. Because in the, our example, it sure looks like the exterior wall goes all the way up to the underside of the roof. Revit makes this relatively easy. Okay, so I'm going to show you that here. Uh, and I would suggest doing it on all, all four sides, and I'll, I'll show you why after I do just the gable ends. So I'm going to select the gable then. And again, you'll notice how I'm selecting some of this geometry uh, in the 3D view. Sometimes it's very easy to select things in a 3D view. Other times, like if I wanted to try to select the interior walls, that would be hard in this view. So we can select anything. If I select a door here and I go to my first floor level, you'll see there's my door and it is still selected. So when trying to modify and play with things, Working in a particular view may be a beneficial depending upon what you're looking to do. Uh, but, sorry, I got off track. Let's go back. And here is our exterior wall. And we want to attach the top. In this case, we want to attach the top. And if you look at there's a little, little uh, icon there that shows a wall, shows it's blue being selected, and then to the underside of the roof. So if I select attach top, base. I've got this selected. Uh, in fact, down here in the bottom left hand corner, it's actually giving me some information that I might want to try to follow along with. Um, that's been going on for quite a while. We just haven't talked about it as far as that kind of prompt at the bottom. And I'm just going to select the roof. And you'll see very quickly, if I deselect it, uh, that it has extended that wall up to the roof. The reason I suggest doing all four corners or all four sides is because right here and right here, we can see that those walls aren't completely trim or flush with the underside of the roof. So the solution to that is just to attach all four walls by rotating, selecting, and eventually selecting the roof. And we will have a finished 3D parametric model of a shed that is 12 by 16, has a double exterior door, an interior room with a door, some exterior windows, a ceiling, a roof, and a floor, all like our example. So if you got this far, congratulations. Make sure you do a save. The next time we're together, we're going to talk about how to start setting up this page. And that can sometimes be more challenging to make it look nice than drawing things in the first place. Thanks so much. See you on the next video.